I think Tony Jones describes the Didache well when he says that it's the most important work you've never heard of. It's a short introductory work, uh, no longer than the Book of Galatians, uh, 16 chapters in length. It was written in the late first century. Some of its uh, content may even be older than many of Paul's letters and the Gospel of John. Some scholars even take it back to 50 Common Era. So it's a very early work. It's instructions that are written to new Gentile believers, introducing them to the faith. Uh, There's instructions on ethics, prayer, uh, immersion, tithing, leadership structure. There's even a little bit about the end times. Uh, The title itself, the longer title, uh, is Teaching to the Gentiles Through the Twelve Apostles. Uh, It claims to actually go back to the apostles, uh, resting on their authority. Um, And it very well, in parts, could actually go back to the apostles, or at least to to the time of the apostles around that time. Uh, It appears to be the outworkings of Acts 15, where, as we know, the Jerusalem Council ruled that Gentiles coming into faith, becoming a part of the kingdom of heaven, don't need to convert and become Jewish and thus obligated to the Torah in the same manner of Jews. But nevertheless, when we read the New Testament, we see that the Torah is still there for instruction for them. So the Didache really is kind of the outworkings of this. How does the Torah relate to Gentiles on a daily basis? It's an introduction to Torah living for new Gentile believers. It's my opinion that because the Didache is such an early document, it actually tells us quite a bit about early Christian practice and belief, and in some ways even more than the New Testament. Uh, I think this is expressed in two major ways though. First, uh, Christianity started out as a sect of Judaism. It it wasn't a separate religion. It was birthed out of that. So the Didache's instructions on Musar, of course, which which is ethics in the Jewish tradition, Tevila, which is immersion, Tefila, which is prayer, Kashrut, the food laws, and Maser, instructions on tithing, all of these come out of Judaism. These are teachings from Judaism. Even the calendar, Although uh, the Didache, it does not explicitly command uh, these new Gentiles to observe the, the Shabbat and the festivals of Israel, their week is counted around the Sabbath, the first day, the second day, preparation day. All of this is centered around Shabbat. So these new Gentile believers are right away immersed into the calendar of Judaism. Um, And therefore, I think it tells us that although there is distinction between the practice of Jews and Gentiles um, as they're practicing their faith, Torah is the baseline. Judaism is the baseline. Um, Second, I think what the Didache shows us is that in the early Christian community, that action was emphasized over belief. So in the Didache, there is no uh, there's no discussion of of theology of things like Christology of atonement from sin of how does salvation work. Uh, it's not that these things weren't important. I mean, certainly they were discussed amongst the early believers, but the emphasis was on how do you walk out your faith. You showed your faith, as James says, by your works. So in other words. I don't want people to get confused and think this is a works-based righteousness. You're not earning your salvation, but once you have that salvation, your belief and and what's happened in your life is shown every day by the transformation of your actions and walking out the Torah. One of the questions that we often get asked at First Roots of Zion and Vine of David is that because we have put so much time and effort into this project of translating the Didache and writing a commentary on it, do we actually view it as scripture? Do we think of the Didache on par with the Bible? 
And let me be abundantly clear, while we view it very highly, we do not. We do not view the Didache as, as scripture on the same level as scripture. However, there are a number of good reasons why I think believers in Messiah should think of the Didache very highly. Uh, for one thing, because of its early date, it was actually viewed as scripture by a number of prominent early church leaders. Uh, for example, both Clement of Alexandria and Origen viewed the Didache as scripture at one time. Uh, Others said that while it is not scripture, it is appropriate to be read aloud in services publicly uh, to instruct in godly living. And it also was one of the most uh, popular extra canonical works of the early church. And I feel like if the, if the members of the early church in the early believing community, if they viewed it so highly, then I think we ought to have a high regard for it as well. Second, again, while the Didache is not scripture, it constantly quotes and paraphrases scripture. This is especially true with the words of the master. Yeshua's words are weaved in and out of, of the text. They're even midrashed upon. Um, but really, the Didache throughout constantly quotes, and you'll see in the footnotes in our own translation, it constantly quotes both the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, and the New Testament. So while it is not scripture, it quotes scripture throughout, and you'll see this in the, the footnotes in our translation. And one thing to remember is that the writer of the Didache, he is not asking us to, to rest on his own authority. He asks us to rest upon the authority of the very scripture that he rests his authority upon because he quotes it so much. The writer of the Didache places his trust in scripture and so can we. The Didache has, has really excited my faith in a number of ways. I, I have just really loved studying it. I, I think one of the most uh, prominent ways is where it leads us back to. Uh, a lot of Christian periodicals today, books, magazines, talking to Christians on the street, everybody wants to go back and live their faith as the earliest believers did. Everybody wants to be part of uh, a church that's like the book of Acts, so to speak. And, and we all know that over the last 2,000 years that things have changed a lot, but how do we get back to that point? How do we get back to the, to the faith of the book of Acts, the way the early church lived? And I feel like this is where the Didache comes in, and it's been just so instrumental in my life. Because it was written at such an early date, it's an incredible window into the faith and practice of the earliest believers, uh, particularly those of the nations who are, uh, who are coming to faith in Messiah, they're becoming disciples of Yeshua, and they're interacting with Judaism for the first time. It's as close as we get to seeing what the daily practice of the believers was like in the book of Acts. Um, the New Testament itself, while one of the foundation works of our faith, it doesn't talk so much about what daily life should look like. However, the Didache does. And for me as a Gentile, it's been very, very helpful because it shows us what Torah practice for the nation should look like. There's been a lot of confusion in Messianic Judaism today as to how, how should Gentiles uh, interact with the Torah? What does that look like? And I feel like the Didache help clear, helps clear this up for us. It helps paint a clear path of what this should look like. Acts 15, of course, lays out these uh, four prohibitions that Gentiles are, are, are to follow, uh, prohibitions against sexual immorality uh, from 
uh, food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from things strangled. Gentiles are not obligated to the Torah in the same manner as Jews. But the Didache kind of picks up from here and points us forward because obviously the Torah does play an important role, but what instructions do we need going forward? And the Didache really, it's, it's as if it is further instructions from the apostles on these issues. For me, the Didache, reading it, studying it, it's been revolutionary. I find it really an authentic voice and, and something that really rings with truth. I think it's important for a modern day believer to study the Didache in order to get a better idea about what faith and Messiah originally look like. In the first section of the Didache, there's a heavy focus on ethical teachings, on ethics. In Judaism, this is known as Musar. And this section draws heavily from Yeshua's words and relates them in a systematic fashion that details what sacrificial kingdom living really should look like. Today, so many have lost the biblical love that they should have and, and this idea of laying down our life for others. Um, you know, we don't have respect for teachers and authority figures like we should. Uh, these things need to be reiterated over and over. And the Didache teaches all these things in an authentic, messianic, Jewish context. Additionally, you know, spiritual disciplines uh, that the Didache mentioned, things like uh, a, a set time prayer, fasting, and liturgy, all of these have been all but lost amongst most believers today. This is especially true for us as uh, who grew up in, in evangelical churches. We, we often viewed these, these spiritual disciplines as part of a works-based righteousness or dead works. Yet, it's evident that we really do need these disciplines back in our lives today. These disciplines, they help us stay holy and set apart for Hashem. These practices were inherited from Judaism, and the Didache takes them and adapts them specifically for Gentile believers. When reading the Didache, it's apparent that many of the things that we think are, are so important were not that important to the early believers. And likewise, so many of the things that we don't see as important anymore were central to the early believing community. The Didache helps us get our priorities back. It helps the reader get their, their sense of direction back to the priorities of Rabbi Yeshua and the apostles. It presents these instructions in a practical and accessible way that help live out daily faith in Messiah.